guys, I'm Ruby Sogol. Hey. And we just saw an amazing movie called Detention, and we're repping the shirts because we got free shirts. Wait. That's Josh Hutcherson. We'll get into this later, but her shirt says Cla Clapton Davis, and mine is just the Detention logo. But um, we got to see a screening of Detention, and let me tell you guys something. This was a movie to see. <laughs> I liked it a lot. Okay, it was like totally different than what I expected. Like, I yeah. went in there and I was kind of like, oh, this isn't, I don't know how to like. I was like, uh, this is gonna be like an okay movie. I wasn't that. I was like kind of excited, just mainly to see Josh. And then like as the movie went on, I just like couldn't stop laughing. It was so funny. So funny. Okay, because <gasps> if you guys have seen the trailer, which I will link in the bottom bar, I really advise you not to watch it, just because you'll get the completely wrong idea of what this movie is. This. The trailer was so off leading and I think that the director even tweeted that he hated the trailer and that they made it look like just a horror movie and it's totally not. I thought it was going to be literally the Breakfast Club meets Scream and I thought yeah. that was all it was going to be and we got into it and we were like, what? <laughs> what is this? It was so completely random. I will get into spoilers later. Spoilers if there are really any. Well, I guess there are. Mm, but, yeah, there um, are. I'll just tell you guys right now, it's if you watch the trailer, it's not going to be what you're expecting. It is pretty much a 99.9% .9 comedy. It is hilarious. Yeah, it's really funny. It is written so well. It is so on point and just so clever. And, like, we were laughing so hard that we would, like, miss other funny lines. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a movie you have to see, like, more than once to pick up other things. Oh, and, like, the gore parts. There's, like, gore parts in it. Spoiler, whatever. And it's, like, it's, like... It was really funny. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was kind gross. of like it, it was, was really kind, funny. Yeah, it was like kind of one of those movies that mocks other horror movies, yeah. but in a way, it, it wasn't. But um, I don't know. It was just. It was so interesting. It was something so different to see. Like, it was so completely random. But for some reason, all of these weird events all came together in one and formed an amazing movie. So it was like perfect. Yeah. Okay. So this movie had like an incredible amount of 90s and 80s references which was great if you are educated on that <laughs> like I don't know I could see a lot of people not understanding this movie if you don't know your 90s and 80s that well like I don't know what were some of the things that they referenced? There was a uh, Saved by the Bell they had some like Oasis yeah they had a lot of bands bands they oh had, yeah a yeah. lot of bands they had Oasis they had Sting who else oh, were they talking about? Hubba Stank? Oh Hubba Stank um uh Hanson they did Oombop. Um, what else did they do? Oh, they had some like Backstreet Boys. Like, oh yeah, MC. yeah. They had so much, and um, they referenced Scream a lot, which I'm a huge Scream fan. So to hear that, that was incredible. They dress like the night. Oh 90s yeah, too. yeah. They had like it was kind of like the and oh, and I loved oh. it because they poked fun at hipsters, hipsters a lot. Yeah, and I thought that was great, that. and the way that they did it was really good, and it wasn't like. You know in Hollywood, sometimes they're like, oh, this person's a hipster, and they're like, not a hipster at all, like, they're just a popular person. So it was actually good to see that they kind of got that on point as to, like, what a hipster is. Yeah, like, they, it was, like, definition hipster, like, what a hipster really is. Yeah, and they were kind of talking about, like, how pretentious it is that, like, people are, like, teenagers in this age are so, like, oh my god, like, I love the 90s, and, like, <laughs> I don't know, I thought that was, like, so good. Like, the director actually puts a scene in the movie where he makes fun of his own work because he directed a movie called Torque and it got a horrible like review like everybody hated it and um, they kind of said like how stupid it was in the movie which I thought was hilarious and I love when directors don't like take you know their when they don't yeah when they don't take their work too seriously and they kind of can poke fun at their own movies and you're like I know this was a horrible movie, so I'm gonna throw this in this other one because it was hilarious. Yeah. You know, like I know it, it was really refreshing, and we actually had the amazing opportunity to go to a Q and A afterwards with the director and um, the the co writer, writer and two of the people from the cast. It was the main girl yeah. Riley, and there was like some random, not to be racist, this is exactly what they call them, this silent black kid. <laughs> so he was there too. So if you guys see the movie, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But um. He did a good job at the end, though. With yeah. The band. Yeah. So, where do we even start? Whoa! <laughs> like, this movie was just twisted. Like, I'm still trying to figure out what happened. It was enough. Okay, it was complicated enough to make us like, what is happening? But I still got it. Like, it still made sense in the end. And I was, I was getting a little bit worried towards the end. I'm like, they're gonna not complete this. They're not gonna talk about certain things. But they did a, a good job, a good job of explaining things. They ended it really well. Yeah, they explained like they explained everything in the ending. And I don't know. It was just, it was, it was really well done. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I have to say. Um, 
there wasn't like I don't think there were any like boring parts in it or like parts where you were just like really like what the hell is going on like there was were right. just because it was shocking but it wasn't to the point where it's like I have no idea what's yeah. actually happening yeah yeah it, a lot of it was just shocking you're like where did that come from like <laughs> yeah. when did this happen like how did that start but I don't even like I don't even know what to say about this movie like it's definitely in my top 10 movies and I just I don't even know what to say about it like you know, the director even said this is a movie you're gonna have to see multiple times to get everything and I definitely am seeing it again and yeah, I'm pretty sure you are too, right? Yeah. And I definitely advise you, I know it's only gonna be in a few cities, um, it hasn't been like, I don't know, it hasn't There's, been wide released. Yeah. Actually, the director paid for the entire movie on his own and he took out loans for the movie, yeah. he didn't get it distributed to him or anything like that, so that was really refreshing. Um, Especially since he paid for it himself, it was like a really well like constructed movie yeah oh one thing i wanted to talk about is the movie is so visually creative if that makes sense like just the shots like everything that they did was like nothing i'd ever like really seen and he the director was a, a music video director and in a way i feel like the movie almost looked like a music video like it had just such a crisp like kind of like um contrasted color but very vivid but dark at the same time. It was just so, I don't know, I, I really hadn't seen anything like it, like the way it was actually shot, like the, the way that the actual like picture looked, and I thought that was really cool and creative. And you know, it, the opening credits were really cool. Too. Yeah, I really oh. like the opening credits. Talk about the opening credits, like what they were. But okay, well, I don't know, yeah, they're kind of hard to explain, but it's like the opening credits, it's like, in the beginning, like when Josh, he like steps down on a skateboard and like, his name is written on the shoe on the shoe and then it's like throughout um the beginning of the movie like you see like somebody goes to their locker and like is oh like josh was at his locker and he was like doing the combination and like at each stop it'd be like it's the director and then like it have the name the name or like on the locker there'd be like graffiti or something and it, it'd like say who it was like who was like the like casting who? director or you know they would yeah. just like announce like who like the people were in the movie yeah like the opening credits like instead of it just being like a song and like like names put up it was really cool like i had Definitely never seen cool. anything like that and yeah it was like creative yeah it was Definitely. really cool like just the randomest things like i don't know like when i first saw it, it was like josh hutcherson's name on like the star of like his commerce and yeah. i was like oh that's funny they just instead of it being like chuck taylor's like it was josh hutcherson and no but then you kind of see like you kind of have to think for like a few seconds and like kind of see a few of them to see like oh wait these are like the opening credits and i don't know it was just it was really cool and like they did a really good job with keeping the movie modern <laughs> but still bringing it back to like older times i guess like yeah. the vintage kind of for our ages and by the way um i'm 16 and she's 17 so <laughs> that kind of generation if that makes sense um i don't think to be honest you don't know your 90s and 80s kind of like I don't know, what, what would you call that? Like, uh, not history, necessarily. No, it kind of is. Like, you don't know your 90s and 80s shit, then you're just gonna be screwed. Like, you won't understand, like, any of the jokes really. It's just, like, it's not gonna be as good of a movie for you, because you'll be like, what? Yeah, what like, are they people will be about? laughing, and you'll just be like, wait, why are why? they laughing? Yeah, so, it's not like I'm like, brush up on your history books and read a million pages about it, but if you are educated on, like, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, like, like, Scream, like, Nev Campbell, like, and, like, I don't know, you... It's not that you have to know every single thing, because obviously that's not going to be possible, but if you do know, like, Oasis and, like, Sting and oh, Hanson. Oh, uh, Patrick Swayze. Oh, Patrick Swayze. Like, a... there were so many things like that just dropped, like, right after another, and if, you, if you're if you not quick enough to think about it and think on your feet, it might not make sense to you, and you probably won't enjoy it as much. So, just, if you guys don't know that, not saying that you have to go read about it or anything, but if you don't know that, you might not enjoy it as much just because... You won't you be. Yeah. You, you won't get the jokes, and that's almost every single one of the jokes is about something like that. And yeah, the jokes are really fast too. Yeah, so it's the like movie kind of moves attention. really fast. Not not the actual plot moves fast, but their dialogue moves very fast. Yeah. And the movie is written really well. And it took them three years to make the entire film. And I think that was a really well spent three years because yeah. they did a, like a flawless job on it. Like I literally, I have no flaws in that movie to be honest. Yeah, there was nothing that you could really like critique. I guess unless you weren't in on the generations and yeah. that kind of thing. Then you would just be like, oh, look, I don't like the jokes they made because it didn't make sense or something. And if you guys are going into this movie expecting, like, something that's completely normal, a normal teenage movie, you're not going to get it. <laughs> it's going to be completely random, and you're going to have to go into it knowing that it's going to be completely random, and 
like accept that and if you're like oh this is stupid this doesn't make sense like that's dumb why would anybody do that don't think like that if you're gonna think like that just honestly don't see the movie but if you know it's gonna be completely random and you like movies like that and you like like not knowing what's gonna you're gonna love this movie and I really encourage you guys to see it like even if you just want to see Josh Hutcherson's face you guys should go see it like this movie really really deserves um, some money and support and I know that they're not opening it in a ton of theaters but there's, there's only like 10, ten there's only yeah. ten cities that are opening it this weekend but if you guys do live by a city that it is playing in I will probably link like the AMC like ticket kind of theater thing um, in the bottom bar so you guys can see if this movie's playing by you and just kind of check up on it because I know it, if it does well this weekend it will probably be released at least a little bit more I don't know if it's ever gonna go nationwide because I don't think it will but um, um, yeah, definitely you guys I really recommend going seeing detention. I gave it a five out of five and it's definitely in one of my top tens for ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really. So yeah, and also like some of, there was this one scene um in the library and uh oh. yeah, when they were like in detention and it's like they were going back through like some of the generations, like two that there was like two thousand five, two thousand six, and like it was funny because it's like they were wearing like Ed Hardy and like Bond Dutch and like it was pinpoint right on it. Like, Perfect. In 2005 like, or six. If like, you that's went what back you wore. to two, yeah, exactly. If you went back to 2005, like today, that was exactly what you would have seen. It was like the Von and, Dutch and stuff like yeah. that. And they even said that the, um, the soundtrack was really expensive for them to make because it was like 50 cent and like really big songs, but they needed them in the movie because they went so well. So he said that he spent more of on his budget on uh, getting the soundtrack basically than anything else yeah. and I thought that was really cool because he didn't want to kind of just change it just to not pay as much money he's like I want to make this movie right and I think he did a really good job of that and I really applaud him for just kind of doing what he wants and not really caring what other people are gonna think so yeah, yeah. he did a really good job with this movie I mean if yeah. I made the movie I'd be really proud to even if it didn't make money uh, I hope you guys liked this review, and if you guys have seen this, please comment and tell me what you guys thought, and um, if you guys are going to see it, if you're excited to see it, like, let me know, and let me know, like, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, things that you liked, things that you didn't like, so yeah, um, I hope you guys are having a great day, I'm and- add something, sorry. Go for it. And if you haven't seen this movie, go watch it. Go. Go watch it. Watch it. I'm not like, even kidding. I'm serious, though. Even if you're just gonna see it for Josh Hutcherson's face, it's worth it, because his face is in a lot, and he's really beautiful, and also yeah. Dane Cook's in it, and he's really funny. Um, the, the cast, even though it was pretty, like, a low-key kind of cast, they, they were really good. So, yeah, definitely, guys, go see it. I mean it. It was so good. Okay. Bye! Bye! <laughs>